This is Tell Us Your Story, a legacy recording confirming that success has no ceiling. First-person accounts of successful Oklahomans over 55 who defy the conventional wisdom that their best years are behind them. I'm Gwen Falconer Lippert in association with 55 Over 55 Inspiring Oklahomans. You may know Mo Anderson as leading Keller Williams to be one of the largest real estate companies in the world. In this sample podcast, Mo tells us her story of growing up on the farm and realizing her childhood dream of becoming. A joy-filled life. Lessons from a tenant farmer's daughter who became a CEO. That's Mo Anderson. Mo, tell me your story. I was born and raised on tenant farms in Oklahoma. And I want you to know that sometimes living on that farm was joyful and many times it was hard. I would say that I learned a work ethic that you just don't learn unless you're on a farm because on a farm, the work never ends. And it's more difficult to teach a child who lives in the city because there's not as much work to do. So at the age of six, I had real responsibilities One of them was to go after the livestock each evening. We had cattle and we had sheep. And that pasture lane became the place where I dreamed. And I dreamed of so many things. Especially, I dreamed of becoming a public school music teacher. (laughs) I didn't even know what a CEO was (laughs) at the time. But probably my favorite thing on the farm was when we would go to Enid occasionally to buy whatever we needed if we had money, if we had the money. And we would stop at the feed store, and I got to pick the sacks of feed for the cattle, and then my mother would take those sacks and make them into my clothes. And Gwen, you can't imagine how I longed to have a dress made out of store-bought material. (laughs) A feed sack? Literally, like a grain feed sack? And in those days, because of the war... They would make the sacks with some kind of a design on them because so many people living in rural communities depended on those sacks for the fabric they would use to make their children's clothes. And so uh, that was really fun when I got to pick out the sacks for my dresses. (laughs) See, I'm 84 years old. And then you would have something to wear to school. Yes, I would have dresses for school. Your dream was to be a music teacher, but at early times, I read you didn't have any lessons for quite a while. Right. I began taking piano lessons at the age of 12 on a beat-up, pitiful piano with sticking keys that a neighbor was willing to give to us because, of course, we couldn't afford to purchase one. And I rode my pony to my piano lesson a mile down the road. And unfortunately, there was a bridge between me and my piano teacher, and my horse would not cross that bridge. So I had to get off, lead the horse across the bridge, and walk the rest of the way because I wasn't large enough, old enough to get myself back on the horse. And when the piano lesson was over, my wonderful teacher named Bess, she would help me up on the horse. I'd come to the bridge, (laughs) lead the horse over the bridge, and then walk the rest of the way home because I couldn't get back on the horse. 
<laughs> you were generous enough to tell us that you're 84 years old. What year were you born, and what was your given name? I was born May the 12th, 1937, and my mother read a French novel, found the name I Moselle. I Mo Zell. And that was my name. In high school, the kids sometimes called me I Mo. So, do you want to know how I got Mo? I want to know how you became Mo. Oh, <laughs> uh, I received a small scholarship toward my tuition at Oklahoma College for Women in Chickasha. So my parents took the few cardboard boxes that we had packed, and they let me off at the door of the Nellie Sparks Dormitory in Chickasha, Oklahoma. And coming down the stairway was a lovely young woman who was also a freshman, and she said, what's your name? And I said, my name is... I'm Ozell, however, some people call me Imo. And she said, I'm going to shorten that to Mo. And it stuck. <laughs> so, your freshman year of college is when you became Mo. That's when I became Mo. And I've been Mo all of these years. And frankly, Gwen, I love it because nobody mispronounces my name, and everybody remembers it. But for good reason as well. What an incredible life. Now, let's go back to the tenant farm. Put that in perspective. Were a lot of your classmates also from farm families? Yes. <laughs> yes. We lived six miles from Drummond, Oklahoma. And all of my friends lived out on the farms, rode the bus to school, and then, of course, there were some of my friends who lived in the town of Drummond. So how did Wacomus come to be a part of your life? When I was a sophomore in high school, my father had an opportunity to rent some land in the Wacomus area. Our farm was a half a mile north and a half a mile east of Wacomus, mm -hmm. and I was so excited to move there, Gwen, because there was an indoor bathroom in that house, and that was my first time to have an indoor bathroom. It had always been the outdoor John for me growing up, so can you imagine how exciting it was to be able to go to the bathroom inside your home. <laughs> and how old were you then? I was a sophomore in high school. Wow. So the first 16 years of your life, you used an outhouse. An outhouse, yes. And so how did your life change? Well, it was very difficult to leave all my friends in Drummond, but <laughs> the attraction of an indoor bathroom... <laughs> defeated that. <laughs> when Tell Us Your Story continues, Mo Anderson recalls going off to college, adapting her dreams, and what happened at her first job interview. Mo Anderson, she'll tell you on Tell Us Your Story, first-person accounts of successful Oklahomans over 55 who defy the conventional wisdom that the best years of their life are behind them. I'm Gwen Falconer Lippert in association with 55 Over 55 Inspiring Oklahomans. Mo, your family moved from Drummond to Wacomas. How did that change your life? Moving to Wacomus was God-ordained because there was a women's study club in Wacomus, 
and they selected me when I was a junior in high school to be the delegate to Girls State. And Girls State was really a bit of a turning point in my life because it was there that I actually got to use some of my leadership ability, and I was elected Secretary of State. (laughs) Fabulous. And then I was the first alternate delegate to Girls Nation. So I didn't get to go because nobody broke a leg. (laughs) But it was just such an honor to be participating in that fabulous, fabulous program. And I would say it gave me a lot of confidence Mm -hmm. to know that I could do things and could accomplish things. And, of course, my dad told me growing up, honey, You can do anything you want to do if you'll just work hard. (laughs) And did you believe him at the time? Uh, Yes, I did. And I often teased him later in his life. I said, Dad, you should have said, if you'll work smart, (laughs) because there's a big difference in working really, really hard and working very, very smart. So at what point in your life, Mo, did you go from wearing feed sacks to wearing store-bought clothes? Well, I got some store-bought fabric uh, when I was a junior and senior in high school because by then I was working in the summers uh, for my dad. I worked in the fields, and I had the money to buy the fabric. So my mom, who was just an amazing seamstress, made me some clothes. Mm. And I would say it was a junior in high school when that changed. And I was able to buy my own clothing because I worked every summer. So when you went off to Girl State? I had probably three store-bought fabric dresses And I felt really good in my store-bought fabric. (laughs) (laughs) At what point on the way did you realize, I'm going to be somebody? Probably after Girls State. That seemed to instill inside me the confidence that I could achieve. One of the things that I wanted to achieve when I grew up was to make more money than I needed so that I could give it away, to buy people birthday gifts or take them on a trip or give to a charity or give to a ministry. And that was a passion of mine because you see, Gwen, growing up, there was never money for birthday presents. So I kind of grew up with a a goal of doing that. And of course, I did become a music teacher, and I quickly discovered that when you're in the teaching profession, it's very difficult to make more money than you need. And that's so sad to me because I loved, loved, loved teaching fourth, fifth, and sixth graders music. Oh, my goodness. It was so much fun. When I transferred to OU from Oklahoma College for Women, I could not be a music major, and I had to give up my dream of becoming a grade school music teacher because they closed the practice rooms at 10 o'clock, and I worked to pay my tuition and my school expenses, and I didn't finish working till 9.30 at night. So I had no way to practice. I couldn't afford to buy a piano. I couldn't afford to rent a piano. I didn't find anybody who was willing to give me an old one. And so I gave up the dream. And in my very first interview, which was Traub Elementary School in Midwest City, Lester Goldsboro, the principal, 
interviewed me. And at the end of the interview, because so many people who had written letters on my behalf talked about my musical ability, he looked at me and he said, Mo, would you be interested at all in teaching music at Traub Elementary? And I nearly fainted and fell on the floor, and I said, yes, I would be interested. What I learned from that experience is when God puts a dream in your DNA, it's going to come true. We hope you've enjoyed this sample podcast featuring Mo Anderson in the Tell Us Your Story series a first-person account of successful Oklahomans over 55 who defy the conventional wisdom that the best years of their life are behind them. I'm Gwen Falconer Lippert. It's the Tell Us Your Story series in association with 55 over 55 inspiring Oklahomans. Oklahomans.